okay so now we have seen how to run a jupyter notebook using anaconda uh, so for those who did not want to install anaconda there's another way you can do that uh, using python 3 raw uh, install uh, of using pip3 uh, install jupyter and then all the necessary packages and then run the uh, notebook so we'll see that as well let's check it out so I'll assume that you have python 3 already installed if you don't then go to website and like download the python 3 installer and all like it's an easy step you can check it out from the internet so once you have done that uh, then go to your command prompt or your powershell wherever you want to start or terminal wherever it is uh, so then type pip3 install and jupyter so and press enter so i have jupyter already installed uh, from before not because of the anaconda mind you it's because like i installed it before uh, showing you this uh, tutorial so i already have that and so it shows requirement already satisfied so sorry it shows requirement already satisfied and uh, yeah so that is it so because i already have it so it's requirement already satisfied and now I can run a Jupyter notebook, but how to do that? How to run a Jupyter notebook? Let me first change to uh, documents and let's see the okay. So now I have changed to the folder where I want to start the Jupyter notebook. All I have to do is type Jupyter notebook, right? The same as you as we did in Anaconda prompt. So press. And then it will start running it just wait for a second it takes some time to run so let's wait yeah so it has started open the browser so here's your Jupyter notebook so it started in the same folder so all the same files you can see you already can see that like there we have our fourth notebook as well <laughs> like we used to make it a while back using anaconda right so now that we know how the jupyter environment looks let me just open a notebook for you where we will see the library's example uh, so this is your my first notebook I -I -N -B. so here i will show you the three most important libraries for machine learning and data science so uh, first of all welcome to jupyter notebook tutorial uh, so uh, here so you can see like we'll talk about three libraries pandas numpy and matplotlib so let's get started so package installation and import how to do that uh, if you have anaconda then it's fine like you al already have all these packages installed uh, already have these libraries installed uh, in the anaconda thing like it has already these things so you don't have to worry about installing them separately but in case you didn't so you have to do the uh, following like you just have to go to your command prompt again again type pip3 install so we'll talk about three libraries right pandas numpy and matplotlib so type pandas numpy matplotlib i already have each of them loaded so it will probably show requirement satisfied yeah so requirement already satisfied matplotlib in numpy and i guess for pandas as well yeah so all the requirements are satisfied so don't have to worry about them let me just close this terminal yeah cool so let's get started in case you didn't have this before so it will load it for you Make sure that you have an internet connection, right? So it will download the file from the internet and install. So now, uh, yeah, so here in the notebook also, uh, it will be shared with you the notebook and you can see like the things have been written in Markdown. So like I was talking about how to write in Markdown, right? So if you see, this is how the raw Markdown file looks like. Uh, this hash is for uh, your heading and then you can put a link, which is my bio link in LinkedIn. So uh, these are for making things bold uh, these things yeah these are bullet points and all so you can check it out on the internet you will have some markdown tutorials and all uh, so like now we come to the main thing which is this 
so this is a block of code so first of all we have to import the packages right all the libraries have to be installed before i can run the code so i run uh, import numpy as np so from here on numpy will be referred as np throughout the code and pandas will be as pd and matplotlib.pyplot plot will be referred as plt and note this command uh, matplotlib pin line this basically means that all the output that i'll uh, require for plotting so first of all let me talk about what these packages are about numpy is about linear algebra and matrix computations panda is about uh, loading files that looks like tables uh, a lot of data data files that look like tables and matplotlib is for plotting so this command matplotlib in line it means basically it's an instruction for the compiler to show all the outputs uh, of the plotting section to inside this uh, notebook so we have this these are your out see out thing right so these are your output sections so what it will do this inline thing it will uh, produce the plot outputs within this output block it will not open a separate window and show you the output so that's easier to work with so first like let's go to data loading with pandas so here's a link to the official documentation you can check it out as well uh, for now we have a file on student performance.csv so what are csv files csv files are comma separated values so in that file all the values have been separated with commas so it's basically a table kind of a data with uh, uh, like each column the value of each column of each row separated with comma and each row separated with your this thing the new line character yeah so uh, like we'll load the student performance.csv we'll load this in the memory of the program so we do a pd dot read csv so read csv is your function for loading csv files into the program memory so df so what what does this read csv return it returns a uh, this thing a data frame object so pandas have uh, the way of manipulating things here is with data frame objects so this read csv converts this csv thing into a data frame object right so then we print a uh, number of entries so if you do a len a df so df is the data frame object right so if you do a len uh, it shows the length of the data frame which is basically the number of rows inside uh, this data frame so number of rows is it shows uh, if you see the output number of entries equals and uh, it's showing thousand and if you see uh, df dot head right so this head function when called on a data frame it gives you the uh, df head you put here number like in place of 10 you can put 20 or 30 or whatever it is you can put and it, it's the number of uh, rows to show it will show the first n number of rows in the data frame so i uh, here output 10 uh, rows so in 10 rows you can see like uh, there are these columns uh, these are your index 0 1 2 3 4 9 uh, then there is a gender column race public ethnicity parent level of education student performance file it kind of relates uh, some experiments on done on students belonging to different gender and race and whose backgrounds are different so uh, then there are your scores there so you can see like this is the way the data frame uh, looks like i mean the output is like this this is the data how the data looks like in a table format okay cool so uh, you can see like there are uh, certain uh, terminologies here observation and feature so if you see like i mean this uh, uh, this row one row relates to one particular student right so in this case every student is your observation like it's kind of a pool of students imagine a pool of students and from there you pick a sample so that becomes your observation so that particular student so that is represent his uh, his or her data is represented in the row of the table and what are the dimensions of the data dimension basically means like what are the features like i mean how like i mean which uh, aspects of the student do you cover in this data so which are the aspects gender race uh, parent level of education lunch test preparation scores uh, so and the scores in the three exams so these are the uh, features of one observation 
and then like this is the uh, these are the features of the next observation so like these are called feature columns the columns are basically features of the data so how like i mean which particular aspects of the data are being described and the rows are your every observation cool so that is your thing observation and features and then like what typically involves in a machine learning pipeline is basically you have a raw data file from there you extract the data in this table format so essentially not always the table format is present because like in student format uh, performance case suppose like this was loaded in a database so from there you have to pull the data with queries and all and then put them in a uh, csv file make a csv file out of them so that requires some processing as well we will not look into that here so then like once you have this csv file you can do some something called an exploratory data analysis which is basically going through this file and looking at the data and, and doing some set statistics out of them and kind of seeing like how the data looks like yeah so once that is done uh, like uh, let's take you through some examples of exploratory data analysis so first we'll see uh, like you can see this these columns this gender race ethnicity parental level these are uh, like i mean the values are in strings right and the strings uh, like have uh, particular like a fixed number of values like uh, for gender you have uh, a female uh, male and for race ethnicity you have group uh, group a b c d um, and parental education a bachelor degree a college master's degree so all these things you have so now what you can what like let's first test out how many uh, like i mean what are the possible values of gender and of race ethnicity and parental level of education this is just a part of the file right and like it's impossible to go through them manually and pick out like which are the uh, possible values of these uh, features so for that we have uh, written a small line of code just see uh, call dict so it like first define a dictionary so in this dictionary we will store the uh, the uh, column name and uh, against the column name we will store a list of possible values that that column may take right yeah. so the dictionary has been defined and uh, you, like let's see how the code works so for column in df dot columns so data frame dot columns so columns here uh, is the list of uh, column values so these are your columns right if you see in the data frame gender race ethnicity so these are the names of the columns so that name is represented by this list df dot columns so that represents the list of the names of the columns so for every name so what we do is we create a dictionary object uh, with that key column and then in that we put df call so when i do a df third bracket call uh, square brackets call so what it basically does is it goes to that particular column so suppose like so what we will do is basically in this case first the first value will be returned as gender that is your first column then race ethnicity then parental level of education and so on and so forth so when uh, this thing is returned so gender is returned so what we do uh, doing is in this call dict so we are making a uh, uh, object uh, of a, uh, the instance of a dictionary so what we are doing is uh, storing an object uh, uh, dictionary entry with the key of uh, call so call for in this case will be gender for the first iteration so uh, the key is gender and what we are storing as values we are storing as df call so like in this data frame it's it's a column so this gender column df gender so dot unique now this dot unique function what it does is it goes through the whole column and then kind of picks out all the unique values that are there in the column right so then it's the list uh, function then makes a list out of that uh, it's not a function basically it's a data uh, this thing data structure so a uh, list makes a uh, like stores it in a form of list and then when you do a print call dict so here see you can see that gender it's the, the list contains female comma male so 
So these are the two possible values that gender can take. Uh, race ethnicity it can take the values of group B, group C, group A, group D and group E. Parental level of education, bachelor's degree, some college, master's degree, associate's degree, high school, some high school. So these are the possible values of parental level of education. So in this column, parental level of education, these are the possible uh, values that can be obtained. In lunch, you have standard free reduced test preparation course none completed so note that like i took uh, the columns till minus three minus three basically means all but the last three so i didn't take the values of the last column uh, last three columns because these are numeric values so uh, like they will there will be like multiple values for them so there's no point in taking them uh, in a in, like calling a unique function on those columns right so now what we do is we kind of check the distribution of the various values of uh, this columns so like for key in collect so like i mean then this this dictionary is stored here so okay let me do one thing let me show you running this script so let me just import it press shift and enter from this block of code it's loading give it a second yeah so see in one so this is the first run so first execution then let me run this yeah see this code is working and here you have the output cool so next let's run this dictionary so this dictionary is generated and now let's run this block what this block is does like it checks the distribution first let's understand the code then we'll run it so key in call dict so call dict has this 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 dictionary is your call dict so in the call dict we uh, take out every key and then for every key we first make a heading distribution for values of key and then df key so key you can understand like this key this will be this gender gender is your one key then race ethnicity is another key so we take df key uh, so in the data frame we refer to that particular column and then do a dot value counts so this function value counts it basically counts the number of different values present in it and then like we print it along with the two new lines so let's run this code and see control enter see it's ran right and then it shows distribution of values for gender there are female uh, there are 518 females and 482 males so uh, yeah so distribution of values uh, for a race ethnicity group c there are 319 uh, people in it group d has uh, 262 people in it and group b 190 and so on and so forth here you can see like things are arranged in uh like this descending order decreasing order right so uh, you have in that distribution of education as well you can see for lunch values as well uh, distribution of test preparation course how many have taken how many haven't so all these are the output now this was for your categorical data so what is a categorical data a categorical data is your kind of data that can take some discrete number of values for example this gender like it takes only discrete number of values which are female and male and for race ethnicity there are five possible discrete values a group a group b group c group d and group e so these are all uh, categorical data you can typically like what uh, in a machine learning pipeline what they will do is uh, like i mean replace this with numbers like female you put a zero male you put one then race ethnicity you put a uh, for say like group a you put a 0 group b1 group c2 d3 and e4 so this is how like you will typically uh, like i mean put these things and when we will see in machine learning algorithms like it's easier to deal with numbers than in strings so there uh, like once it's done because we have looked at categorical data now let's look at the numerical data so what are the numerical data columns these are your the last three columns math score reading score writing score these are your numerical data columns 
so let's uh, like pull out some statistics out of them so how to do that df dot describe so this describe function when called on the data let's call it so it ran on the data and then pulled out some statistics so count so count is the number of rows like how many uh, like entries were made under this column so you have thousand uh, reading score you have thousand uh, writing score all all these columns have thousand entries each so here you can see the mean of the data it's presented std is your standard deviation then you have minimum yeah then 25 percentile like i mean uh, you have 25 percentile and then 50 percentile and 75 percentile and then you have max uh, like what is the maximum score of 10 in this uh, uh, papers so now let's talk about something called standardization and normalization we'll see why this is important so uh, like i mean in machine learning what it happens is like you have data uh, say like a multi-dimensional data what do i mean by that is basically suppose like you are trying to predict if a person will like make a purchase or not so you have possible features in your mind that can affect that choice so in that features not all features will be on the same scale like uh, like some choices may range from a say a value of 0 to 1000 suppose the earning of a person it can go from 0 to say a million so that is your range of earning but that would not be say like the range of uh, the amount of uh, food consumed by suppose like i mean in kilograms the amount of food consumed by the person that wouldn't be on the same range like like you cannot expect a person to like i mean eat up like 1 million kgs of food so for that like i mean uh, the scales will vary as you can probably guess the scales will vary so it is important sometimes to reduce everything on the same scale and for that like we have this procedure called standardization and normalization so what is standardization standardization means to make the data look like a standard distribution okay so uh, what is standard distribution a standard distribution is essentially a distribution that has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of 1.0 so standard deviation should be one and mean should be zero that is what you call the standardized data so for a set of observations like then if you have a random variable x that has particular values uh, for this example it can be your math score like your math score has random values right if you go and see math score 72 69 90 this can be uh, like considered quite random right yeah so math score then it looks like uh, then to standardize it making the math score so you see that math score has a mean of 66.089 and a standard deviation of 50 but what we want to do is we want to make the mean go to zero and then standard deviation go to one so for that scaling we can do this operation we can define x dash as x minus mu by sigma if you do this and i do this on every entry of x so in this case like it will be 72 69 for every value you do that operation and then you get the output and that would be uh, like a data set that will have a, a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one if you look at the python code here the python code for standardization is given so you have an observed data set suppose uh, then you pull out every x from it and then make a sum and then also store the sum of the square if you like i mean this is just for calculating standard deviation and all like you should have done it in statistics in class 12 you will know and people will hire up if they have taken ntl 106 class and all like they would know right so this is just standard procedure so look at the uh, course uh, code and you can see like this is this law so finally here you have x new defined as x minus mean by standard deviation so we do this operation that i was talking about x minus mean by sigma right and then store it in the new data set so this is your uh, standardization of the data so and also like there's another concept called normalization normalization means scaling the data uh, between 0 and 1 in the range of 0 and 1 both included 
so for a set of observations uh, like this transformation is should be something like this x minus x min by x minus x max minus x min so for a set of observations you have a minimum and a maximum so what you do is subtract the minimum and then divide it by the range of the data right and python code if you see minimum x is mean of observed data so mean function is already available in python you can run it on a list like object and that will give you the minimum of the list and max x is your max of the similarly a function and then for new data set you uh, like uh, do this operation x minus mean x by max x minus mean x for x in all set data set so you see a new data set but but what you can uh, possibly guess like i mean there should be something that will allow you not to write this much amount of code every time you have to standardize right so yeah so you can see <laughs> yeah we don't do that here